They used to hide things here in, the, in these wells, you know. So only the tower is left of it all. There must have been a castle here. Uh, with a well, with a big hole in the middle. So, this tower is the only part of the castle left. Templar's castle. So, must have been a big castle. So when the, uh, when the Templars moved out to Switzerland, now they let it all here. And the people around, they took all the stones, that's why there's not much left and built houses with, you know. I wonder why they left this. It must have been difficult to take it all down. Maybe one big tower and the rest was lower. So the lower parts, like here, the, you see the foundations everywhere. Uh, they just carry it down the hill, like here the foundations of the rest. They just carry it down the hill and made houses with it, eh? So that's why there's nothing more. Not much left, but the whole thing like here is the foundation. And they went to Switzerland. There's only this left. This part they didn't carry it away. So the French king was right when he said the Knights Templars are all sodomists and Satanists. And that's why he tried to burn them all at the stakes in 1314 in Paris. And because he didn't succeed, the Homo Templars, New World Order, burned all our good women at the stakes instead, later on. Because those witches, in between brackets, didn't want to collaborate with these Homo Templars. And mind you, a normal hetero would never burn a woman. And this is why we have today all these perverts, homos, pedophiles and satanists at the highest level of control, with thousands of children disappearing because of the homo templars and the collaboration of the Swiss Alemannic tribe. Men that would stop at nothing to get what they wanted, no matter what the cost. Twenty years after Jerusalem was taken, the Dome of the Rock was seized by a group of warrior monks calling themselves the Knights of the Temple of Solomon or more simply, the Knights Templars. In Jerusalem, the Templars began to deviate further and further away from the practices of Christianity. They learnt the secret arts of the Kabbalah, an ancient form of Jewish magic, along with its dark rites and rituals. The Jews had learnt the arts from the pagans of ancient Egypt, during the times of enslavement to the Pharaoh and developed them into Babylon at the time of Nebuchadnezzar. In 1307, King Philippe of France arrested them for charges of denial of Christ, homosexuality and idol worship as well as magic. In 1314, Pope Clement V declared all Templars as heretics to Christianity, ordering all their properties to be seized. Their leader, Jacques de Morlaix, was captured and burnt to the stake. The Templars were cornered, and just when it seemed they were finished forever, a glimmer of hope arose from a seemingly certain end. They were to find a safe haven as well as an ally. But not in France. In fact, in a country in a desperate struggle for independence against the English. The country of Scotland. For some, Scotland's hope of independence had died with the death of William Wallace. However, to the King of Scotland, Robert the Bruce, the arrival of the Templars gave him a new secret weapon. Their experience, gained over 200 years of fighting the mighty armies of Islam, had made them expert in combat and warfare, and more than a match for any army brought before them. In 1314, the Templars, allied with Robert the Bruce and his army, took to the fields of Bannockburn in the long-awaited showdown with the English. Robert the Bruce's foresight paid off. The 25,000 strong English army 
suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of only six and a half thousand men. The dream of an independent Scotland had finally been achieved. The Templars had brought themselves back from the brink of destruction and never again would they allow themselves to be destroyed. This time they would control the country by controlling its kings and in order to preserve their secret order the Templars would have to die or more precisely the name would have to die. The Templars who had escaped Europe were finally laid to rest in Roslyn Chapel, Scotland which stands to this day as sign of their presence in Britain. Their descendants became the true power of Scotland in 1603, the death of Queen Elizabeth I left England without an heir to the throne. By virtue of descent, King James V of Scotland became King of England. In doing so, Scotland and England joined to form a new kingdom and the power that the Templars held over Scotland spread to give them a firm grip on the whole of Great Britain. For over a hundred years, the Templars concealed their activities, fading into the background until they were little known and little remembered. However, they did not cease to keep a firm grip on Britain. All the time they were planning, regrouping and infiltrating positions of power in all corners of the kingdom. In 1717, the Templars made their reappearance in Europe. They had grown in both number and strength and were now ready to coin a new identity, free from their reputation of the past and given credibility by none other than the monarchy and aristocracy of England. And the name they chose for themselves was a name that would be known by many, but understood by a few. This new name, the Freemason. Freemason. The new identity and the grandeur of its members afforded the Masons with respect and dignity. The first royal member of the Freemasons was Frederick, Prince of Wales. The latest members include Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and consort to the current Queen of England, Elizabeth II, who herself is a grand patron to the Masons. However, behind closed doors, the Freemasons were free to indulge in the secret rites and rituals handed down to them by their ancestors. And these became the basis of their levels of membership, called Degrees. Degrees. The Freemasons were not content with power in Britain alone. Their ambitions were far greater. In the years to come, the world would witness Europe and America being plagued by wars and revolutions, each more devastating than the other. However, these would not be as commonly believed the spontaneous effects of a downtrodden people, but in fact schemes created by the exclusive few driven by hunger for absolute power. All this would take place from the very country from which they had fled centuries earlier and would come to the base for their global domination. Well, look around today. Was the king really mad? Didn't he see it coming, trying to protect his people from, his ever, from this ever-growing evil? We have a Templar system today who installed hierarchy, the internal Templar system and essence of sodomy to dominate or to be dominated to be on top or to be down, as in, as above, so below, or as above, so below. Okay, he wanted to protect his old world order feudal system, but he did see the enormous Satanist danger coming by the Baphomet Templars, and in a way he was the first anti-New World Order activist 700 years ago, and he paid with his life for it. <laughs>